guys welcome to gone to series in the earlier tutorial we talked about lazy loading versus preloading in spring framework thereby understanding one of the major differences between an application context and a bean factory in this tutorial we'll understand the life cycle methods for a bean provided by spring framework this is the basic spring application demo we saw in almost all of my previous tutorials to understand spring concepts. Let's take the same example to know more about lifecycle methods in spring framework. So what I've done here in this demo is I've written a restaurant class, springs configuration file and a test class to test this demo. In the restaurant class, I've written a greet customer function which just prints this string on the console that is welcome dear customer this is the lifecycle demo and in the springs configuration file i've just put an entry of restaurant bean which will initialize the restaurant class when we will request it to do so in our test class in the test class here i am requesting spring framework to get us the restaurant bean which i'm calling as restaurant object one and then i'm calling its greet customer function which just prints this string on the console. So in short, Spring instantiates as well as destroys Bean for us in our applications. So we do not need to bother about how it does so. It's like when we need a Bean, it should provide us and when we are done with it, it should destroy it. But sometimes you may wish to perform certain actions immediately after Spring instantiates any Bean in the application or just before a beans destruction by spring framework and that's what we're gonna see in this demo how we can do that so these are called lifecycle methods provided by spring framework what spring says is you may write two additional methods in your bean class one method will get executed immediately after bean is instantiated by spring framework and the other method will get executed just before spring is about to destroy that bean so how to do this? Just write two methods in every bean class and convey spring which one to call after its initialization and which one to call before its destruction in spring's configuration file. You will understand more with this demo. So what I'll do is in the restaurant class I would include these two additional methods. This method will get executed immediately after spring instantiates the restaurant bean. And Spring is going to call this method just before it's going to destroy the restaurant bean. So we have written here two methods. Now we have to tell Spring Framework for their purposes. And you can do it using init methods and destroy methods in the Spring's configuration file with every bean. So go to the Spring's configuration file and add the two attributes init methods and destroy methods. So I've done here. So with this mean, I've provided here init method attribute and destroy method attribute. So here I'm telling Spring Framework that whenever it's going to instantiate restaurant bean, I should call a method with the name init written in the restaurant class immediately after restaurant beans initialization. And here I'm instructing Spring to call a method with the name destroy, which is written in the restaurant class just before restaurant beans destruction. In your bean classes, you may give any name to these lifecycle methods. For example, here in the restaurant bean, I provided init and destroy as names. You may provide any name which you wish to have for these two methods. It's only you need to convey spring framework using init method attribute and destroy method attribute that these are the two methods you need to include as lifecycle methods. Now only one task is remaining. Let's go to the test class. If you observe here, we are just initializing application context using this syntax. And here we are getting restaurant bean using its get bean method. But nowhere in this application, we are closing the application context. So what it means is, if we explicitly close the application context in Spring application, Spring will close or destroy all beans present in it before the end of this main method. And you can close application context explicitly using this statement. So what this statement means? 
This is abstract application context. This is one of the classes which has implemented application context and it has a method called register shutdown hook. So if you call register shutdown hook from your spring application, spring will destroy all beans in it when the main method ends here. All right, so we have provided all configurations in the Spring's configuration file, provided init and destroy method in the restaurant class, and registered shutdown hook here. Now let's run it and test our application. Cool. The output clearly shows that Spring called init method and destroy method immediately after restaurant beans initialization and before beans destruction. There's one more important thing that you should know about lifecycle methods that is init and destroy methods. If you go to the Spring's configuration file, you would observe that I have provided init method and destroy methods with an individual bean here. So if you have too many beans having initialization and destroy methods with the same name, you don't need to declare init method and destroy method on each individual bean as I've done here. Instead, framework provides the flexibility to configure such situation using default init method and default destroy method attributes on the top of the Spring's configuration file, like this. So I have provided here default init method and default destroy method which is applicable for all beans present in this Spring's configuration file. So let's delete this init method and destroy method. As I provided here, the default init method and default destroy method on top of this configuration file. So if you run this application now, output will still remain the same as in case of defining init method and destroy method with individual bean. In the next tutorial, we will talk about post-construct and pre-destroy annotations in Spring Framework. Guys, thanks for liking our tutorials and providing feedback to us through emails and comments. Believe me, your comments and feedback is really valuable to us. Do like this video if you really like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel to get all updates on latest video tutorials and programming stuff.